I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Baldwin, if you call a roll. Ms. Carney? Here. Mr. Rutgers? Here. Mr. Perry? Here. Mr. Pence? Here. Mr. Reed? Here. Ms. Ferguson? Here. Mr. E. Bailey? Is there a motion to approve the agenda for tonight's council meeting? Motion to approve agenda for tonight's council meeting. Second. Mr. Carey? Yes. Ms. Ferguson? Yes. Mr. Reed? Yes. Mr. Rutgers? Yes. Mr. Yes. And is there a motion to approve the council meeting minutes from August 22nd? So moved. Second. Yes. Ms. Ferguson? Yes. Mr. Reed? Yes. Mr. Rutgers? Yes. Mr. Pence? Yep. Yes. Yep. Yep. And is there a motion to approve the work session meeting minutes from September 7th? So moved. Second. Ms. Um, Madam Chair, uh, my copy of unless it's been corrected has in the very first sentence a little bit of an anomaly. <clears throat> um, a motion made by Ms. Ferguson and seconded by Ms. Ferguson. I'm sure that's a typo or kind of an oversight kind of a thing, but that probably should be fixed. And I'm sure they, they can handle that. I didn't even see that. <laughs> did not see that. Is there any other additions or corrections? Is there a motion to approve the- Approve as, as, uh, as amended. As updated, yeah. Mr. Carey? Yes. Ms. Ferguson? Yes. Mr. Reed? Yes. Mr. Rutgers? Aye. Mr. Pence? Yes. And a motion to approve the September 12th council meeting minutes. So moved. Second. Mr. Carey? Yes. Ms. Ferguson? Yes. Mr. Reed? Yes. Mr. Rutgers? Yep. Mr. Pence? Yes. We do not have any visitors on the docket this evening. Um, I'll be brief real quick on my uh, mayor's report. I met with Red Cross to do a walkthrough of the youth building at the park. They said that it was a great location to host a flood drive. Um, just waiting to find um, a date for us. Looking at November, they asked about December because that's a crucial time, but it's tough with staff and, and residents getting ready for the holidays. So we're looking at a November date. Um, wanted to give an update that's something I've been working on for the last three years, which is shocking and it takes as long, but um, the electric poles and lines out on Noteman Road. Finally was able to get the um, new pole set in by um, Frontier and then First Energy raised their lines and Spectrum came through and raised the cable. So can put that project um, as a complete and is appreciated by all the, uh, the farmers around that has had an issue of getting their equipment through the last three years. So that was exciting. Awesome. News um, and now also we just need to do Main Street. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So like, well, lifting, lifting the lines is one thing. It, yeah, removing that brings another um, point that uh, Mr. Stanford, Ms. Sonnet, Mr. Huff, and myself met with uh, First Energy last week to talk about a plan and a phase plan of what it looks like to remove the lines on Main Street. So um, Mr. Stanford's working on that we identified kind of a first phase, second phase of that project. So looking at kind of getting an update on that. And then met with the our representative from the governor's office last week as well. And so that proved to be a good connection um, to hopefully put some of our projects that are needing to get completed at the forefront of, of their list. Um, and then attended the planning and zoning, which I'll give the update later. Um, last, the week before that, I attended the Union County Safety Coalition meeting um, to listen in as part of Safety Town. And Sergeant Prather attends those meetings for as our representative, but it's been neat to sit in and listen about ways that we can work with our events and further help their, is, um, their agenda. And walk to school day is next Wednesday, October 5th. So I know, Chief, are you gonna be covering any details on that? On walk to school day, or are we gonna put a, 
Yeah, I think Tom, or Lieutenant Jackson is actually taking care of that. He's taking care of that, okay. So I know that wherever they um, have people to go out and, and stand to walk children to school, if you want to come out and join in. Last year, well, I think we had a or last time we did it. We had last a couple year. officers walk with them. Mm -hmm. What's the date on um, Wednesday, October 5th. And that is all I have. Uh, Ms. Sonnet, Finance Director. To uh, take on what you said about the electric, the, the electric in the downtown is going to be turned off. The overhead poles are not going to have any lights. So just kind of give that that vibe of what it's going to look like without the overhead lighting down there. It's not going to. We're not going to take them down just yet. We're just going to give that look right now. So hopefully Ryan has sent the information to First Energy to get them shut off. I think they call them shutter. So that's what's going to happen. Um, later in the agenda, it's mentioned that there is going to be a motion for a public hearing. It says 6.30. It's going to be 6 p.m. to meet the public meeting with the uh, county commissioners in the third of October. Um, notes, we um, went to the market last, last Thursday, when it was, no, a week ago Thursday. Uh, Mr. Conley kind of alluded to that we thought we'd be at the three and a half mark. We were. We had 3.47 is where we ended up being. So spot on so that's all i have to say thank you Ms. yeah and, and this is probably a good time to jump in on just if anyone has any questions about that meeting so that meeting on the third at six is between village of plain city and the madison county commissioners to potentially form a 6119 so it's not between there is no 6119 yet so right this meeting is a joint meeting to discuss uh the possibility of creating the 6119. So um, any questions anyone may have, remember that it's two bodies discussing the creation of a third body, not us and the third body having a conversation. So I think if anyone has any questions ahead of that meeting, we want to remember that, you know, we're an internal single body that's meeting with another single body. So we need to kind of be on the same page. So I, I welcome anyone that has questions about it to reach out to either Ms. Sonnet, Mr. Lafayette, myself, I, I don't know that much about it, so I'm probably not the person to talk to, but just so that when we kind of think about that meeting as in that frame. Are there any documents that are available <coughs> regarding what's the context of, or to be discussed, or? There's gonna be an agenda coming out and documents that go with it, yes. Uh, we are not, Mr. Albers, the yeah. attorney representing the potential district is going to create all this. Yeah, so, so we're kind of like okay. at their mercy. He's yeah. scheduled for the public meeting. Yeah, so 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 let me let me say that a different way and make sure I understand it. There, so there is no sixty one nineteen yet. Okay. Mr. Albers is rep representing the potential formation on behalf of both the Madison County Commissioners and the Village of Plain City, right? Okay. So any documents that he would provide, he would share with both the Madison County Commissioners and us the same documents. It's not like he he's just he's just kind of working as the intermediary to work on the potential creation. Yeah, the reason I, I asked is because you know getting together to discuss something, you know, you, you know, it's helpful to know in advance what you're actually going to be discussing, and, and instead of what do you think about this idea kind of kind of things, I would think there would be more substance to it than that, <clears throat> and so sooner rather than later would be a good time to get any kind of background material or anything that, that people and, need to know and i know meeting. and i know the solicitor you've worked with the travelers <clears throat> in the past so yes. um what would you expect just like some memos of like what we're going to discuss what, what would you, you know so, we would hold you to it but. today just earlier today he sent over a proposed <clears throat> agenda and then also the preliminary study for reasons for formation okay so he sent that over to um, mr lafayette and miss sonnet and i so that we could kind of take a look at them perfect um, and then once those are good, we will send them out to council. We have not received the proposed petition yet. The petition is the document that actually gets filed with um, the court. We haven't seen that yet. I was giving them till close of business today, mm -hmm. and I have an email already drafted up that I'm going to fire off to him and Mr. McCarter. Just going to ask him because that's the important document. That's what gets filed in court, like I said, and it kind of lays everything out. Perfect. Um, about board appointments and what the district is actually going to do. So we kind of do, we really want to see that document. Perfect. And, and e sure. will either you or Mr. Lafayette, will someone from the village solicitor's office be there on the third? Yes. All right, perfect, thank you. Is that 1800 start time a hard
Or yes. Okay. Uh, well, it just got moved from 6.30 to 6.00. So right, so not yeah, I saw the signal. It is. Because um, <laughs> I work until 6.00. It's a, it's technically a meeting of the county commissioners and village council. So in order to start it, we do need um, just quorum. a quorum so, of both of those bodies. So let me, uh, okay, perfect. So we'll need at least four of us. Um, so looking around the room, you'll be late. Uh, will you be able to attend? I should be here, yeah. You should be able to attend, Mr. Reed. Will you be able to attend? Six o'clock, you yes. said? Okay. Yeah, fine. Yeah, I'll be able to attend. Um, and then I guess my only other question, and if, if you don't have this answer right now, but maybe along with the documents, will there be a decision made, like a vote taken between, like the, the county will take a vote and will take a vote, or will that happen at one of our regular meetings subsequent to that? Like, is there actually an action that will happen at that meeting? There is, so that's the last document that we'll send out ahead of time. The county is doing their own resolution. Um, Mr. Lafayette and I are drafting an ordinance um it's our understanding that both bodies if everything goes well is going to pass a resolution and an ordinance respectively in order to file the petition so so help me understand that a little bit so we would have to pass by emergency and wave a second reading mm -hmm. so realistically we need five members um and potentially even six um so we should, I'll reach out to Mr. Daly. I will talk to him and make sure that that is he, he can. Is he okay? I, I haven't talked to him, but I, I think so. Um, I'll reach out to him this week and make sure that he can attend because based on our, our ordinances, we would have to pass like three things. You know, we'd have to waive a reading, pass by emergency and everything, if we're gonna make an action that night, so. That's yeah. gonna, and that ordinance will probably, it will be the last thing happens at that meeting yes. so, so we just need here, four in order to start yeah. it and then the the more numbers um, in order to pass the ordinance perfect i, I will i will take the follow -up. mr daly make sure he's well aware of the meeting okay thank you very much sorry yeah. thank you mr terry chief McKee. uh yes just an fyi the dreams or she dreams again 5k run will be scheduled for October 8th uh, this year at 8.30 a.m. This is kind of going to take the take over for the four-miler that UPCO used to put on. Um, Lieutenant Jasko, Officer Seagrass, and myself met with the Jonathan Elder School Administration concerning their safety security training. They've uh, once again asked the police department to assist them with this. Um, I would like to thank, personally thank Officer Seagrass for all the work he has done with this. Uh, and also all the training he does for the district, for the school district. Uh, <clears throat> just a reminder <clears throat> that the homecoming parade is this Wednesday, starting at six o'clock. Uh, so there should be, there might be some traffic issues at that time. Other than that, that's all I have to sign, Mayor. Thank you, Chief McKee. Village Administrator. Got nothing. I mean, she was in the building today and signed paperwork. She brought the baby in, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Council yeah, so we already talked about the special meeting. Um, so our next work session will be on, I believe it's the, the next Wednesday, so the seventh. Or no, sorry, that's sorry. I, I was in I was in September, uh, the fifth. So on that docket, we have the Uptown redesign plan, uh, the Brandy Initiative review, and there will be a DRB appeal. Um, I would ask that the solicitor's office, if possible. Um, we have not done a true DRB appeal, and especially, certainly not with some of the newer members of council. Um, and I'll, I'll send a follow-up email to this. Uh, but basically, if we could have kind of like the beats on how uh, the appeal should go in the eyes of the solicitor's office. So um, what is to be reviewed, what isn't. I know there was a debate, um, and I, I, I'm not going to even try to litigate or understand it all, if we're rehearing um kind of like evidence or we're just hearing the process so if we can kind of have that laid out on what uh it, how it goes and how something would be either upheld or, or overturned so if there's a simple majority versus super majority anything like that um just so we know just because it's new to us so we kind of can go into that meeting you know not be explained it as mm -hmm. we're doing it it'd be nice if we had a little update ahead of time um, and like I said, the other two items I have on there are the Uptown Redesign the Brain Initiative. 
I'll send a fault to Ms. Burrell um, to make sure we're on track for those, but I would assume we are just to finalize, unless you know that we're not on call. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. All right, I'll send a follow-up. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Terry. And also on that October 5th, um, I'm, it's the first meeting of the John Marauder, um Strategic Planning Commission. So I, I'd like to know that process too, because I would like to attend that if it's at all possible, because they use our the knowledge of what the village is doing and with their school plan. So um, I'll be in contact with yeah, you. Yeah, and, and now that I think about it also, you'll probably recuse yourself. I will have to. Yeah, you'll have to recuse yourself being on that committee. So we'll need to make sure we have the right amount of people. Well, I guess it depends on if we're, if we're reviewing it from a procedural standpoint yeah. or if we're reviewing it from an evidentiary standpoint. Another, another, another good reason right. is to get a kind of a, okay. a one pager of here's what it is, here's what we recommend. Mr. Rucker either sits on it or doesn't sit on it, uh, depending on he's obviously our DRB mm -hmm. council representative. So cool. Thank you for that update. Um, and then law director. Um, the only thing that I have was going to be later on in the discussion items on um, the alley easement. So um, we did complete the easement language that's needed in order to get this done. We did review the plat um, to see if maybe we could pull the description from of the alley from that plat and just kind of insert it into the easement. And we can't, it is deficient, so we do have to go ahead and order a survey. Um, so that is moving along a little bit slower than I know everyone wants to, but it is moving along. Okay. It seemed like such an easy thing to do <laughs> when it came up, but it's... And then the clock tower easement, that's, I'll just put that on your radar too. To yes. Mr. Lafayette. Okay, thank you. Uh, marketing and communications? Um, we had a meeting this past week and I left all my notes at home. So I'll catch you on the next meeting with an update. But we do have, as Mr. Terry mentioned there, we are, we'll be reviewing what the marketing study on the 5th, uh, or there, not marketing, the, the rebranding. And I know that Taylor was meeting with them today. So, so, so do you know if, uh, so I think we talked about this last time, if we would formally adopt it. And I think the answer was yes, we would. Uh, do you know if at that meeting we'll formally adopt it, or is this like a final, like, here's what it is, and we'll vote on it and adopt it later, if you, if you have any idea? I have, so, as I understood it, as I understand, we will, at our next meeting, our, our next communication meeting, we will decide if we're ready for it to go to council. Okay. Do, when so is your meeting? I'm sorry, you said. It will be in October. <laughs> <laughs> After this next meeting, so we had our so so it'll be after the work session. So are you are, so you're thinking maybe we remove it from the work session, move it to November? Let me confirm on that. So let me let me put you on the follow up. Yep. And that I don't know if I ever had a chance. Sorry to jump back to my. I sent out kind of an updated hat like discussion topics list and just kind of highlighted the newer items. And I'm sure we'll move stuff around, but I tried to add some stuff that we had talked about because um, we'll. I already have to start planning for next year, so. Mr. Sense, did you do some videos, I think, on the farmer's market? I did. Uh, I did a video on the farmer's market, yes. So yeah. I went there a couple of times and took some video and and compiled it into a little minute. Yeah, publicity thanks for doing thing. that. In, in the absence of a, of a formal marketing department, it's there you something go. that Good. you know to do every now and then. So. Thank as a volunteer you. effort. <coughs> Thank you for that update. Um, BZA, do you have an update? I, okay. And planning and zoning met last Wednesday with our um, public hearing for the zoning code rewrite. Um, There's some good participation from the community and asking like what they'd like to see as far as communications. Uh, which Ms. Brill put together some thoughts on that of how we can better maybe advertise it if you're not more digitally inclined um, to see that something is out there such as um, some sandwich boards around or ways that, you know, putting it up on the Slack sign at 42 and 161 to say, you know, so, uh, zoning hearing or other ways that people, they're a little bit more visual to advertise it. So hopefully by the time that it comes back to council and does a public hearing, we can take those in, put them into action items. 
uh, zoning commission approved the zoning code um, rewrites with some conditions that Ms. Brill is checking on and with the consultant. And one of them was um, clarify <coughs> animal care with or without or outdoor runs. Uh, as it says in the Uptown District, um, basically it kind of was to Dr. Lynn at the Plain State Animal Hospital. It made it sound like it, his business was a non-conforming business in that area. So Planning Commission wanted um, to take a look at some of those businesses that how can we make sure that we are not making it seem that we're trying to run, that that we don't have the perception that we are trying to run current businesses out, that we want to make sure that they have a place and if they ever intend to sell their business in the future that they have that option um, to the, so it can go into something similar, such as a vet hospital. We, definitely said we do not want that perception because uh, that's not our intent for the zoning code update. Um, some other questions came up about non-conformities and there was a, a time period on um, getting it reestablished for non-conforming properties and it was at around six months. So basically, I'll use Queen State Animal Hospital as an As a description. So say Dr. Lynn decides he wants to sell his um, vet practice and the new veterinarian purchasing the practice um, takes eight months or a year to get it up and running how they see fit. Um, it would basically with the current code or the intended updates it would make it seem like it was a non-conforming business that they'd have to go back and get um, get a permit for it. So that is kind of some of the things we ask them to take it to a year because we just don't know about um, how reconstruction will go with a building and such. So that will be coming out as soon as the firm makes the updates and can bring it and put it on for a first reading. Um, but I think we're in the right timeline on that for the zoning code and the planning commission. I mean, we spent a lot of time making sure that the residential side of it was thoroughly vetted. So it's good to have extra eyes on like the uptown business district and we appreciated everybody that came out to the meeting so can i just get a clarification on the the animal care business he's under the new zoning code he would be a non-conforming business is that correct how it it read in the or, like previously but we had it um changed where it is a permitted use okay mm -hmm. So there basically is no problem when you right, get this, this thing right. Yes. Good. All right. Thank yes. you. Yes. By the time it comes to council, so um, that is all I have for planning and zoning. Do you, mm -hmm. I know we're talking about this later. The public hearing comments. Is, are you tackling all of this right now, or do you need to actually? Yeah. Comment? Basically, that's the that's that's the um, what I'm tackling. Perfect. Now, so. so I saw Ms. Brill had sent out a updated timeline. Um, I don't know if anyone, if you want to talk to that at all. Oh, yes. Um, so, okay. Uh, so they're hoping that on October 10th that we can set the public hearing date, um, which would be held about November 14th. Um, and you can do the first reading and then a second reading on November 28th. Um, so then that would be able to come in if there's a you know a 30 day referendum period um, so that we basically can have it approved by the end of December and so implement it in January is, is our timeline. Perfect, so the, the we'll schedule the public hearing on October 10th, have it November 14th, mm -hmm. that'll also be the first reading, second reading, 30 day tail, done by January, cool. Mm -hmm. And planning commission felt that it was important to Basically, there were some minor changes to, you know, and to let the consultant keep looking at and working on to get it to council. So that way it can go through that second vetting process of a, another public hearing. So that's where we'd like to see maybe like a slap sign or um, some sandwich boards that talks about zoning code public hearing. Perfect. For that yeah. November 14th. Yeah, that's good. Idea. Yeah. Any other questions on that or on topic? Thank 
you, Mr. Terry, for having me go through that, that right now. Parks and Recreation Committee. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> um, since the last um, council meeting, we've had two music in the parks. The, the oldest one was the Plain City Community Singers, which really turned out to be way more of a nice event than I thought it was going to be. Uh, the singers had worked hard to get their act together and they did a nice job uh, at the park. It also was the largest crowd we've ever, ever had for music in the park in the 10 years I've been doing it. Uh, partly due to the fact that <laughs> there's a lot of family members and aunts and uncles and grandchildren and whatever that come to these, but it was a really appreciative crowd. Um, and I'm, I probably shouldn't say this, but we did christen them the pride of Plain City, uh, the Plain City community um, singers. So that was a really fun day uh, for everyone. The second event was the Barbershop Quartet, which was yesterday. Rain threatened the weather and depressed the attendance somewhat. Uh, we finished in the dark, in the chill, and in the damp. So. Um, the, uh, um, it, it wasn't ideal, the weather, was the, the environment, let's say, uh, let's just say that, but a good time, you know, was had by, had by all. It was the last event of the season for Music in the Park, <clears throat> and uh, so we will uh, regroup for next year, and we've already started scheduling acts into, into uh, next season. So beyond that, our next uh, Parks and Rec meeting is um, the second Tuesday of October, which is a, a good distance away, and we'll have probably a couple of council meetings even before that. So um, we'll just, um, they're still working on the budget and the CIP. So that's it, Mayor. Thank you. Hi, thank you, Mr. Reed. Mr. Reed, what was the number? How many people attended? About 150. Okay. Um, you know, plus or minus. Five or so. Okay. Um, we also have Fall Fest coming up on October 22nd. And I forgot to mention in my report the Historical Society is having their cemetery walk again this Sunday, October 2nd. And it's from 2 to 5 p.m. at Darby Creek Cemetery. And I attended it a couple years ago, I think 2018. It was a really good event. So if you've never taken a tour of our cemetery and learned about the history, it's a good good time to check that out. <clears throat> are you, are you um, offering, portraying, acting again, or one of the... Well, we were... I, I messed my schedule up. Uh, um, we are signed up to do it. I'm not sure if we're going to be doing it or not right now, so... We've already got our costumes rented, so I would guess we're probably going to be doing it. So you can come see Mr. Rucker and, and Mrs. Rucker as one of the characters. And, and, the saintly one, and the saintly woman that tolerates me every day. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> For that fall festival, we're still planning on having tables or whatever. Mm -hmm. I have a table. I could definitely bring, um, I, if this I, needs like a tablecloth, I'll bring some candy and everything. I'm bringing tons of candy as well. And the tent. If anybody, if we want to decorate that or not mess with it or, you know, but. What time was that? I, four to four seven. Four to seven. I'll be in Detroit. A tent, it would be a good idea, I think. It just was nice last year, kind of set up that as a booth, but I don't know if we need two tents or I'm how many, right. how many of us are going to be there? You're going to be there? Okay, so. I'll bring mine, but yes, lots of candy because mm -hmm. I expect a larger attendance than last year. And yep. There was definitely over 500 children that went through that trick-or-treat alley. Yep. Great, thank you very much. Um, personnel findings? Uh, yes, we met on September 20th, and Clemens Nelson had gotten back um, with staff on the updated information for the compensation study. Um, so the committee spent our meeting time discussing, um, you know, the proposed you know, proposed changes to that and updates to that. Um, the only thing we really did uh, come together as a group to do in the end was task staff 
with um, you know coming back to us with some um, supplemental information so that we can make a decision at our next meeting, um, which will be October the 12th at 6.30. Mayor, if I could interrupt you a little bit. Yes. I forgot to announce during my report that Ms. Burrell, Taylor Burrell, is um, leaving us. She's moving on to the city of Piqua. Her last day officially with the village is, is uh, November 6th, but during that time she's out on her honeymoon. She's getting married in a month, so she'll be out for a little bit, but she's leaving us. Can we thank her for all of her yes. work and what she has contributed to the village. We appreciate all of it. Thank you, Ms. Bartman. I totally forgot. I know I announced it. I know. on finance. I guess I, yeah. Well, then I forgot it in, in planning and zoning to um, fire board. That's me. Um, we have a meeting coming up next week on the 6th. The So my whatever I gave at the last meeting is relevant. Uh, but there are, the new truck did arrive and they've been training the officer or the, uh, the uh, folks in it. They've got another training this week and then it'll be officially christened I think in another two weeks. And so there'll be some information coming out about that for the community to come by as they, as they spray the new truck with the old truck as they back it in and push it into the garage so um, and then I believe they're doing some training over on the water tower this next week so doing some rescue training thank you Mr. Spence and design and preview board we have a meeting uh, Wednesday night here at 6 30 we have I think one certificate of appropriateness to review thank you Mr. Upper. Moving out of reports, is there a motion after we have discussed about the uh, need for the special meeting, which is Monday, October 3rd at 6 p.m. with Madison County in council chambers, is there a motion to set the special meeting date? So moved. Second. Mr. Perry? Yes. Ms. Ferguson? Yes. Mr. Reed? Yes. Mr. Rucker? Yes. Mr. Spence? Yes. There is no old business on the agenda, so moving into new business. First reading, resolution 18-2022, a resolution authorizing the sale of impounded vehicles. Motion to approve resolution. Oh, well, this first, first reading. reading. <laughs> I, messed, I messed up last time. So. Discussion items right now. based on, we talked about zoning code update and the public hearing comments. Um, we've already taken care of our two easements, so Uptown Streetscape update. Ms. Sonnet, if you'd like to. Um, I, I shared the engineer broke down the plan, I think five, six alternates um, to get a base fit, and I think five alternates. So it is, um, we it gave prices associated with them um, just in the, the time issues that we're having here. We decided to go out to bid it and see what kind of prices we get back. But those are just like benchmarks, maybe. And so then, then after we get the good prices back, and you all decide um, which alternate, if any alternates, we want to move forward with. So, and I think it's going to bid, I believe, October 3rd, I think is when it appears, and we'll be opening on October 28th. Thank you. I, I, the estimates are pretty detailed. I mean, I don't know if everyone read through them, but they were line by line. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what we get back. Yeah. We extend it out to completion time only because yeah. we can get uh, maybe get better contract and maybe cheaper prices as well I, instead of have that short timeline that we had originally asked for. Yeah, I mean, until we see the response, there's not a lot to discuss. But for me, I, I'd rather do it right than do it quick. If we do it, if we get a better bid, a better thing next spring, we don't do it right now. That's a bummer, but um, at least we'll have it ready to go, slotted for spring. So. Well, and honestly, with the, the businesses coming up that are right here on the north side of the holidays, like that would really. And they're doing a lot of construction. There's like a, there's a, you know swivel thing right sitting right there right now. So, giving them a little more time to get their stuff in order isn't probably the end of the world. So. Yeah. And since we talked about all the other discussion items already, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second.
those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, say fine. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. That's one of the shortest meetings.